My name is Marty Otanias. Welcome to Getting High on Anthropology. This is episode 12. Uh, I have a special guest tonight, Beck Coop with Buds and Blossoms. You can see us online at uh, www.fsngreen.org and also on Twitter, hashtag Getting High on Anthropology. Uh, just to let people know, we're at Denver Open Media um, in Denver, and I encourage people who are interested to make their own media uh, to come to Denver Open Media, take some courses. You can get certified and use this studio. Uh, the key thing is about Denver Open Media is putting the power of media in the hands of ordinary people. So if you're interested in telling stories or having your own TV show, uh, definitely go online to denveropenmedia.org. Uh, Beck Coop, welcome to the show. Um, so why don't you tell us about your organization, Buds and Blossoms? So Buds and Blossoms was created because I had a vision one day while I was playing with some regular flowers left over from an event and looked at my cannabis plant that was being ready to be cut out of my own personal garden and decided to wrap some roses around the plant. And all of a sudden a light bulb went off and it was like, weed weddings, game That's on. A great so, pairing of, of, yeah. of beautiful flowers. It was awesome. And so how long ago was that? And what would be um, a couple of the steps that you had to take to get the business up and running? So that was back in November of 2013. So one month shy before regulation and, or recreational. And it was just a matter of starting to learn the legality and the different ways that I could incorporate the cannabis into the flowers so that it would stay completely legal and legitimate. And so that the consumer could also personally enjoy the cannabis on their wedding day crack it out of their boutonniere and or really a boutonniere and or take the buds out of their bouquets and smoke them. It sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. So um, since the uh, Buds and Blossoms started, um, how many um, weddings have you been involved in where there is cannabis infused throughout the wedding? Um, probably going on about 10 weddings now and but it all varies depending on the different wedding and who's in attendance at the wedding, and how loud and proud we can be, or if we needed to be discreet, not to upset grandma. Okay, so I wanna go deeper into uh, the process, um, the things to consider if someone wants to organize one of these weddings, but it might be interesting to just backpedal a bit and um, tell us about your background. Like what kind of educational training have you had and how has that in any way um, helped you become a successful business person? So my degree is in recreation parks and tourism and recreation management. So learning how to facilitate and work with groups or work with individuals to create programs or special events and just really learning how to connect with different people, making everybody feel the most comfortable and point on with whatever they might want to do. And flowers just happen to be a hobby that turn into a passion that turn into a career path. Oh, that's great. And what a, a wonderful um, substance to work around, not just the flower <laughs> uh, marijuana to look at, but um, marijuana to consume in many different ways. Um, so I'm curious also, um, uh, let's say me and my wife, we want to renew our vows, for okay. instance. So in other words, have a, um, have a second wedding. What would be a couple things for us to consider or what would make us educated consumers as we come and talk with you to help us um, uh, integrate cannabis in our wedding? Definitely. So knowing the ways that you want to consume. Do you want it to, do you want to vaporize? Do you want to enjoy an edible? Do you want to have tinctures, topicals? What type of feel or ambiance are you going for? Or do you want to have a smoke shack where people can go and literally hot box in a tent and really do the job and enjoy it? Or if they want to be tasteful or giggly, you know, what sensation they're looking for? Okay, so um, if I want to do this well and I want to ensure the um, um, guests at the, at the wedding that's infused with cannabis that you organize, would you recommend that um, uh, people bring or make it kid friendly or would you suggest to ensure that it's successful and without any problems that um, kids are not um, allowed to come to these kinds of weddings? So you can always have a variation of ways that you want to do it. You can have either the minors leave at a certain time and then that's when the cannabis comes in so that you're not having to make it so that somebody can't attend your special day. So having it like that or having a very separate designated area with somebody who checks IDs at the front of that area so that no minors can go past a certain point. Just making sure that the joint doesn't accidentally get past the little Johnny is the most key part of it. So some venues actually have strict regulations on if they will even allow children to be present at the same time as cannabis at an event. Mm -hmm. So some of it will depend on the venue's policies as well. 
as I listen to you talk, it makes me think about all the um, weddings I've been to. And there's always um, uh, some drama. And typically, the drama is associated with alcohol consumption. So there yep. could be a research project here to demonstrate cannabis-infused weddings would probably have less drama because you find um, people are you know more relaxed or, or chilled. Definitely. So that's something that's a, a question for a, a future um, show. Um, cool. So. I want to ask you personally, what's one thing, like the favorite thing about the job that you do? Like if you think of one of the weddings you participated in and helped organize recently, um, is it the kind of food? Is it the, the landscape, a, a hemp dress? Like is there one thing that is just your favorite? It's clients. It really is. Um, I've done many traditional weddings as well with my traditional business, Bex Blossoms, and the number of bridezillas I've encountered are intense. Whereas on the cannabis side, knock on wood, I have not had a single one. And if they start to get on edge, I'm like, just go take a puff, you'll be okay. And they do. And it's just such beautiful and tasteful. But the cool thing is, is that I have never done a themed wedding until I started doing the cannabis weddings. My first wedding was Alice in Wonderland. The second one was Nightmare Before Christmas. And so it was just beautiful to see that people were breaking traditions in so many ways mm -hmm. to let their personality shine through and really let their passion shine through too, not just for the cannabis, but for who they really were. Right, wow. And so I understand with some of the events that I work on, sometimes it's challenging to find the venue mm -hmm. that is receptive. Definitely. So tell us about that problem and how you resolved it. So that was part of the big challenge in the very beginning um, because I had some places that they were okay with you having the bouquets, but you weren't allowed to smoke them or you couldn't even walk down an aisle carrying a bouquet with cannabis in it. So that started me trying to find the right venues. And so once I started finding the right venues and I heard a horror story of a photographer showing up to a wedding where the groom and the groomsmen were smoking, a, they were smoking a joint and the photographer walked in, felt uncomfortable, left, $4,000 contract, they never got any professional photography from their wedding. And this is in Colorado. This was in Colorado. This was up in Breckenridge two summers ago. Wow. So as a result of the challenges on finding the venues, finding cannabis friendly vendors, I decided that I was gonna take it a step farther and create cannabis concierge events because then I had the list of the venues, the vendors, the right mm -hmm. clients, and everybody that could create the custom prime experience we were looking for without judgment without attitude, without an extra fee because they have to put up with us. Right. So it was just a matter of really linking the right clients with the right people to ensure that we all had a positive experience. Okay, so I'm actually very delighted to hear you say this because um, I think you can be giving me some guidance. Yeah. So for example, you know, my day job is I'm a professor in the anthropology department at the University of Colorado, Denver. So in the future, if I wanted to have an event where my students um, uh, outside of class were able to screen their videos and have the public come, and we wanted it, again, it's gonna be outside of class, mm -hmm. um, we wanted it to be cannabis friendly, and we wanted to have live music and maybe stream it on the internet, um, would you be able to help me with that? And what would be some of the things to think about to make sure that that happens? Definitely, uh, venue selection's huge. It's the biggest part of it, is you have to find a venue that is privately owned, private property, and that the owners completely approve of cannabis. So, and if any of those do not line up, then it's a bad situation from the get-go. So, having the venue is by far the most key part of the whole project. Okay, now you know some students um, don't like to drift too far from the university, so would you suggest to me that within the Denver metro area, like at least close to downtown, there would be one or two venues? That Absolutely. I could... Okay. Yep, um, whether it's there are some restaurants that are willing to close their doors for private parties, there are art galleries, there are other smaller venues and different spaces, just depends on the size of the group and the budget, and then we could direct you in the right right way also for atmosphere i mean if you want something that's very industrial modern and chic or you're looking for something classic and rustic all of those we take into consideration same as for any event okay so i don't know if you know this but on the auraria campus there's three institutions uc okay. denver city college and then a, a metro state um, one of those i should know i think it's metro state um, i could be wrong and i apologize but they have a hotel and management course or uh, degree that you can get I would like to advocate that potentially you teach a course for <laughs> these um, ho future hoteliers that they can be knowledgeable and useful to people who want to have a, a cannabis infused wedding. So um, maybe um, I think now would be good to kind of talk with you about an earlier moment when you were getting started. Um, you shared with me an anecdote where 
um, uh, you were at a traditional event with people in the um, wedding industry mm -hmm. and you made a request to have like a booth or an exhibit and then you met some opposition. So tell us what happened and how that affected you. Uh, so it was a sequence of events that really kind of set me off to say, screw you, I'm doing my own expo. Um, part of that went down because I actually physically went to one of the expos in downtown Denver and I was walking around, chatting with people, introducing them myself, telling them what I did. I got high fives, I got hugs, I got all this. And then I had one lady look at me and say, get the F out of my booth. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like, because the association what? with cannabis. Mm -hmm. And she was so offended. And it was difficult to judge because she was an older woman who could have been a flower child back in her day. So why not? And you don't know until you ask. And so I was blown away. But her reaction stood out the most to me that I was like, wow, the high fives and hugs were great. But the fact that I, I just looked at her, I was like, you know you live in Colorado, right? Like, this is where you're at. Like, accept the times and at least be polite about it. And because I didn't like, I absolutely was not offensive when I went in. And so between that, and then I was like, well, fine, there's nobody else doing what I do here. So why don't I set up a booth? Well, I contacted one place and they were like, okay, no, you just can't. Mm. You're, since you have cannabis, it's not allowed because there'll be minors present. I was like, okay, well, it's not like people are consuming, you know, right. it's, you know, it's something visually there. What's the problem? And they just said no. So then I went to another one. They doubled my price. Even on their website, it was listed at a certain price, a thousand bucks. They told me two thousand. Wow. Then another place, they decided that they wanted to tell me I could only bring photos of my flowers. And I was like, that loses the whole effect. Like, you need to be able to smell the bouquet and look and be like, oh my gosh. You know, it's more of a visual experience and just to have it be minimized to a, like a picture and I was gonna pay over a thousand dollars for a booth of pictures? Right. That's ridiculous. So I decided to, with my co-founder, Philip Wolf, we decided to host the world's first cannabis wedding expo. And it really came out of opposition. It was, you told me no, so I said yes. I did on, we did it on the same weekend as one of the largest wedding expos in all of downtown Denver. And we got international press that day, and they didn't. Oh, that's great. So it's game on. And I think what's so important about that story is um, in Colorado, yeah, superficially, people will extend some support, mm -hmm. give you a pat on the back. But when you go underneath the veneer, it really shows like this residual prohibitionist ideology. Definitely. And it seems like um, we're still, I'd like to think there's been some progress, but I'm mm -hmm. sure if you go to some of the more uh, mainstream, traditional kinds of wedding expos, that there'll be that kind of opposition. Mm -hmm. Well, but you know, what was interesting is even the vendors that we got to do our expo, they're like, we would never do a traditional expo. We don't like the feel. We don't like the clientele. We don't like being just a number in a room. Whereas we created a far more intimate experience where people have the time and the opportunity to really engage. And if they went and took a puff before they went down and met the photographers, they might be more comfortable. They might come up with those silly questions. Can we do this in a photo or whatever? And that's far more the experience that you're looking for on your wedding day. Some people do like the storybook wedding, and there's room for all of them as well, but nobody in the cannabis world is really strict to those storybooks. Mm -hmm. We all write our own. Right. So um, in a previous show, I had uh, Phil Wolf on, one of the co-organizers of the Cannabis Wedding Expo, and we got a little bit of, of information from him, um, or a lot of information from him, which was great. But let's get your perspective, and I want to, um, after we get some of your favorite moments mm -hmm. and what you thought um, worked well, tell us what's coming up, because yeah. I'm sure it wasn't a one-off thing. No. <laughs> um, so it was just amazing how receptive people were. People were so excited. We sold out all of our vendor spaces. We sold out on attendees. And just to have a first time, first ever experience, it was just, it was so powerful and magical. Um, we had guest speakers that were talking about just educational options, different legal actions, everything that you need to know to protect yourself to have one of these fun, creative, different weddings. And so it was just beautiful to see how accepted it was, how excited people were, and just to collaborate with other like-minded individuals in the wedding industry because the wedding industry is still very conservative mm -hmm. um, and I always joke that I'm not the black sheep I'm the green sheep <laughs> it's game on again because you know I don't need to be like any of these other florists yes I can make it look just like the picture on Pinterest any good florist can mm -hmm. but to put a true touch of your own creativity your own passion and everything else into it or you know if somebody likes a sativa cannabis 
versus an indica and they want sativa in their bouquet so that they're picking up and they're dancing and hanging out rather than falling over and going to sleep or whatever it might be, it just again brings in that individual unique experience. Mm -hmm. So Excellent. And so would you say with any upcoming event that it's going to be uh, changed or improved in any way from the first um, Cannabis Expo? We're definitely looking forward to having another one where our game plan is in October here, another one in Denver. Mm. And then come January, we're hoping to have one in Portland, Oregon and in um, Seattle and eventually two in California, one in Northern California and one in Southern California. So it's really so taken off. It's definitely taking off. It's been a lot of fun. It's a wild ride. And uh, truly, it's just a matter of keep finding those the right venue because back to the whole experience, the ambiance, everything has to be point on for any of these types of experiences to be valuable and enjoyed. Mm. So finding the right venues, but then finding the right vendors, especially out of state, it's a little more tricky when, we, you know, in Colorado, I've been working in the wedding world since 2011. So I already have all this background with that photographer, that caterer, mm -hmm. and all of these different folks. So developing those new relationships is always interesting, who you can rely on in different areas. Exactly. Uh, but we're really looking forward to expanding it. And we're also looking to have this next one be a two day situation mm. so that we can you know cater to more people who might not be able to come during the specific hours and just really expanding that experience no that's great very exciting yeah. i want to make sure people can um find out about you on the web so you mm -hmm. want to share your website with people absolutely we have cannabisweddingexpo.com and that's the main resource for all of the upcoming dates and information and then there will always be stuff on facebook for cannabisweddingexpo.com or cannabisweddingexpo on facebook as well Great. Um, another kind of question is more nuts and bolts. So back to this um, idea of my wife and I redoing our vows. We want to make it a cannabis infused, you know, second wedding. Um, do you have like a menu to educate the clients in terms of like what are my options, like in terms of strains or in terms of like, you know, are there dab rigs on every table? Like, like take me through, like, like hold my hand, like how to think through what to have or the, what the options are. Definitely. So what we would start off with is a questionnaire that lists through all the different types of services that we can offer. Mm -hmm. So it's everything from 420 transportation to and from the event to are you looking to have vaporizer rentals? If so, do you want something handheld? Do you want something that's tabletop? Do you want edibles? Do you want hemp linens? Do you want a hemp suit or a hemp dress custom made for your event? Anything along those lines. So just really kind of taking the time to look at in what ways you want to incorporate the plant do you want it to be incorporated some in just hemp or do you want it to be straight up cannabis always with the THC and the cannabinoids? I mean, what, are you, what experience are you looking for again? So it's figuring out what your ultimate goal is for the event and what's the feel, what's the mood you're looking for. Okay, and I think what I'm learning is you're not just isolated to weddings. No. So for example, if I had some buddies that wanted to throw me a cannabis infused, you know, party beforehand or if I wanted to work systematically with my wife to have a honeymoon mm -hmm. that was extensive with um, cannabis you can help me with that absolutely we could do a like a honeymoon package where we arrive to your hotel before you do and get you set up with a couple of edibles in your room a vaporizer in your room you know get things just set up and ready for you mm -hmm. oh, I'm just, I'm no we're good okay. we're good um, no, that's great, and I, I definitely want to follow up with you on that um, in the future because I think, and you know this, is becoming normal. Like, it's mm -hmm. becoming um, things that people are comfortable talking about, um, but I do think all of us in this field of cannabis, cannabis studies, the cannabis sector, um, we still face um, stigmatization. Mm -hmm. So in your own life, whether your you're family, siblings, or parents, or cousins, uncles, or colleagues, um, and you kind of shared with the, the traditional wedding expo, was there a time you felt stigmatized because of your, your work and you live and breathe cannabis with, with your life? Uh, yes, a little bit of irony. My grandfather is a retired police chief for Cook County Sheriff and right outside of Chicago. And uh, he was probably the hardest one having the conversation with just telling him I even worked in the industry. At first I said I worked for a nursery and uh, when I was really working at a dispensary and it was a nursery to some extent, um, but it was just interesting because I just had to educate and I had to say that Colorado is very different from Chicago and you know we're not you're not dealing with gangbangers here mm -hmm. that are incorporating you're dealing with professionals mm -hmm. you're dealing with educators you're dealing with people who really know what they're doing and ha know how to be safe smart and regulatory and legal 
about it. So a lot of it is just educating people. Um, you know, he was my biggest family member situation. Uh, but even at my boyfriend's work, he works for a very conservative place. Mm. And there are only three of his employees that know what I do. Um, they all know I'm the flower girl, but they don't know that it's infused flowers as well. Yeah, it's amazing how we have to um, uh, self-censor ourselves in certain situations because, mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, it would be exhausting to deal with every battle where you had to, like, defend what we're doing in cannabis. Um, another kind of question I think would be good for people to know is what's the cost? So, um, you know, I have, um, again, I'm very grateful and fortunate. I'm from California, have friends up and down the coast. People in LA, 50 grand, 60 grand is like not that much money for a wedding. Sure. My wedding with my wife in Holland in um, 95 cost us about two grand. Mm -hmm. you know, we kept a very low budget because um, we want to use the money for other things. Um, but what would be like a range and then what would you get with the, that um, uh, price? So it all really varies on mm. how customized you want to create the package. And when it comes to the cannabis, due to legality, all the cannabis has to be purchased individually from a legal dispensary mm. and then provided, and my companies will incorporate it into the services or into the products. So we cannot actually sell and distribute any of the cannabis ourselves. We cannot even go pre-purchase it for them. They need to make that purchase in order mm. to keep it completely legal. So depending on how much cannabis you would want, would really start to range in your price. Because if you want two ounces spread out all over the place, well, you know, the going rate for a couple ounces could be anywhere between 200 to $500, and that's just for the cannabis portion. Then depending on how large of an arrangement, how big, whatever, how many arrangements, again, it's very, very difficult to give us a price range gotcha. because weddings are so customized. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting you say the difference between American and European weddings is the average American wedding is around 32,000. The average European wedding is around 5,000. Wow, big and, difference. Yep, and even the industry that in America, it's about a $60 billion industry in the wow. wedding world. But in over there, it's around 20 billion. So just to see how much emphasis we put on to the wedding world and tradition and the big gown, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. But what I've also learned with cannabis weddings is they tend to be more intimate. Mm. They tend to be smaller groups. They're not these massive things. Or if they are a massive experience, you know, there's only a small side group that's going over and enjoying the cannabis and on the little smoke lounge or whatever. So it's typically you're not going to see an entire room of people all going over and smoking <laughs> right. a joint together. Uh, that would be amazing, but I haven't had that wedding yet. Right. It, I'm it's sure. It's an industry a, wedding, it would be that way. Yeah, though. it's incredible to hear you talk because, in a way, you could educate policymakers in terms of dosages because you're mm -hmm. learning a formula. Like, if I say I want 50 people at my wedding, and half of my friends, you know, I come from like skate surf culture, are chronic users. Mm -hmm. You know, you probably could calculate like. Definitely. So, how would you like take us through like the average person, and then maybe like the table for the chronic smokers? <laughs> <laughs> and that definitely varies for sure. So. I like to say, you know, especially with Colorado being a destination wedding location in general, mm -hmm. you know, you have a lot of people who, if anybody's getting married here, they're like, heck yeah, we want to go to Colorado. So if they've smoked before and then they smoke here, they're going to realize our cannabis is also different. Mm. It's higher potency typically, you know, than what they might be used to at home. So telling them that that might be a one hit wonder compared to their five bong rips back at home, they might look at you funny and I'm like, no, take one hit. <laughs> You'll see what's up, you know. Uh, but then also I say back to that tourist situation, you might have somebody who like, well, when in Rome, I want to live like the Romans. Mm -hmm. And so you have, you have to learn who your clients are. You know, are majority of the guests out of town? Are majority of guests from Colorado? Are they already exposed to cannabis? Mm -hmm. You know, what is their level of exposure? Or also look at it from an age perspective. Are we dealing with millennials who are like, game on I want that two foot bong I want that eight foot bong whatever or you know is it grandma who's like YOLO I live once let's do this and like you know just trying it out because she feels it's her time mm -hmm. so really knowing who your clientele is will really vary on how much you suggest or what dosing or what manners you present it in because I wouldn't tell all of my people yeah you got to have a dab rig no mm -hmm. that wouldn't be for Majority of my clients, I would not suggest that. Mm -hmm. Majority of my clients, I might not even suggest edibles, even though I also work in the edible industry. Right. I wouldn't suggest that because not everybody can handle them, but also it depends on the duration of your event. If your event's two hours and the edibles are kicking in one hour into it, 
will, or it, they kick in on your drive home, that might be an issue. Mm -hmm. But if you can allow somebody to smoke where it's an instantaneous high that comes on faster and leaves faster, they might be safer to get home later or whatever the situation might be. So again, how long is the event? Exactly. Where are the people from? What what experience? I mm -hmm. mean, are you looking to hot box the room <laughs> or are you looking for, you know, something tasteful? What's great is thinking through um, all of the stuff, you know, the bells and whistles around weddings, for example, save the date, mm -hmm. um, the actual um, invitation. So would you recommend when you have the save the date to put on that, like what's the framing or the, how do you put that on? Or do you just call people and say, hey, just, the, you know, the down low is like. It again, uh, it depends uh, mm -hmm. because some, if they have some people who are going to be attending their wedding that might be in opposition or uncomfortable with it, they might not be loud and proud, as I say. Mm. They might not want to post it. Um, other ones might put something on the website that says there will be cannabis options available, mm -hmm. but they might not say there's an ice, an ice bong, you know? I mean, so just it varies, again, on how much they want it to be part of their experience because I've had some brides and grooms where rather than having it on their wedding day, they ask us to plan a whole rehearsal dinner or they ask us to plan like the bachelorette party and take them on dispensary tours, take them to all these different experiences that's part of their wedding experience, but not necessarily part of their wedding day. Gotcha. So there's many ways you can do it without offending people but also keeping things in moderation and discretion when needed. Yeah, well, there's definitely um, parallels with what you're doing and I'm doing, meaning trying to educate people. Because um, I think we all agree in the industry, you know, having more information, having um, uh, questions being answered, and just talking through with people that, um, you know, that you gotta think about dosage, you gotta think, we all agree, keep it from children, mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, and, um, that you can have a good time with cannabis and you could be safe. Um, so I think, um, you know, we just have a couple more minutes, but briefly, because some of this stuff is sort of funny because of how people poke fun of it, was there one story or something going on in one of the recent weddings that you, you participated in that was just humorous? You know, anything that you want to share that you thought was kind of funny or like, oh, that was unexpected? Um, only because I think people find these antidotes, you know, it um, adds to all the information that you've already provided. Definitely. Uh, truly just... I'll never forget, there was one where we had Dixie Elixirs, the cannabis soda drinks, and <laughs> Grandma being like, it's soda, right? It'll be okay. And we're like, it's a little more than just soda. She's like, well, I think I might like it. And sure enough, she was giggling, and she was out there dancing even harder. And who knows if she danced that hard without cannabis, but it was quite the show that she put on because she just felt that loose and that much more comfortable. And this woman was late 60s, had never touched cannabis once in her life. And it was just amazing to see her have such a positive experience, especially since we all went through the war on drugs, you know, and all this bad talk and bashing. It was beautiful to see somebody, especially of an older generation, appreciate it, enjoy it, and handle it safely and in moderation. Excellent. No, what a great story. I think um, uh, that's going to be inspiration for people to talk to their grandmas, talk to their grandfathers about uh, cannabis and the role that it could play in, in a wedding. So we just have a few seconds left. I want to make sure you plug uh, Buds and Blossoms, but I want to remind people this is um, Getting High on Anthropology. My name is Marty Otanias. You can go to www dot fsngreen.org and also find us online or on Twitter hashtag getting high on anthropology so the last question and in one or two sentences are you hopeful about the future um, in your business and why don't you just kind of briefly tell us the source of that hope or lack of hope I can't wait it's gonna be a lot of fun traditions are changing and I like to tell everybody this is very much changing from a trend into a tradition so you will see more cannabis weddings it's becoming more and more accepted and it's just beautiful to see more vendors, venues, and everybody coming on board. I'm getting phone calls now of, can I be on your list? And that's a huge shift from two years ago when I it was one out of 10 that said yes. So I'm very, very hopeful to see where it continues to go and let's go. I, I would love more Canna Brides. <laughs>